Burbot are a fairly common species across the globe. However, in Idaho they are only native to the Kootenai River Basin, which makes them a unique fish species among the many species occupying Idaho's waters. Further highlighting their uniqueness, burbot are one of the few species that spawns and are most active in the harsh months of winter. Burbot, commonly referred to as ling cod, freshwater cod, or even poor man's lobster, were once an incredibly valuable and abundant recreational, commercial, and subsistence resource in the state of Idaho. Local residents in Bonners Ferry used to enjoy fishing for burbot under the ice in both the Mainstem Kootenai River as well as its tributaries. Unfortunately, due to various human-caused factors, the burbot population in the Kootenai River Basin declined nearly to the point of extinction by the early 2000s. As such, all harvest of burbot in the basin has been closed since the mid-1990s. Idaho Fish and Game, in collaboration with the Kootenai Tribe of Idaho and fishery professionals from British Columbia and Montana, have been working to restore a sustainable burbot population that can support the harvest fishery. Since 2009, the Kootenai Tribe of Idaho has been spawning and raising burbot from Moye Lake in British Columbia and then releasing these hatchery-raised juveniles into the Kootenai Basin. In-river research, monitoring, and evaluation by Idaho Fish and Game personnel have been crucial in understanding how the population is changing in size, what habitats burbot are using, where they are spawning in the basin, along with many other important pieces of information. Since the early 1990s, Idaho Fish and Game personnel have been using baited hoop nets to capture burbot in the river. Each year, hoop nets are deployed via jet boat at the beginning of December, and they are fished continuously until the nets are removed at the end of March. Nets are set and checked two to three times a week, and they cover portions of the river extending from southern British Columbia all the way to the Idaho-Montana border for a total of approximately 125 river kilometers and 50 to 60 nets. When a net is retrieved that contains burbot, all captured fish go through a full workup process by fish and game personnel. First, fish are removed from the net and placed into a holding bin on the boat deck. Next, each burbot is measured and weighed so that researchers can track growth through time. Then the fish is scanned for a small, passive integrated transponder tag, also called a pit tag. These tags are identical to those used by veterinarians to chip domestic pets. The pit tags provide a unique number for each fish that allows fish and game personnel to identify each fish as an individual if it is recaptured in the future. Many of the captured burbot are pit tagged before being released from the hatchery. However, if a fish is scanned for a tag when it is captured and doesn't have one, fish and game personnel insert a pit tag into the muscle along the fish's back, or if the fish is large enough, into its cheek meat. Finally, a small clip of the fish's dorsal fin is removed and preserved for genetic analyses to help fish and game better understand the genetic diversity and age structure of the population. In addition, this fin clip provides information on the sex of the fish, the age at which it was released, the specific location in the river where it was released, and whether the fish originated from the wild or from the Kootenai tribal hatchery. In certain circumstances, select burbot are also implanted with an ultrasonic telemetry tag. These tags allow fish and game to monitor where the tagged fish travels in the river for up to four years. Tags are surgically implanted into the abdomen of the fish, all the while taking great care not to harm the fish. The fish is anesthetized during the entire surgical process, and it is not released back into the river until it has fully recovered. The entire process typically takes no longer than 15 to 20 minutes. Over the last 20 to 25 years of monitoring the burbot population, Fish and Game has gained some critical insights on the status of the population. We have learned that the population has very low levels of natural reproduction, and we believe this may be related to improper water temperature while the eggs are incubating and after the young first hatch. Additional research is underway to address the low level of natural reproduction, with the ultimate goal of correcting the problem and allowing the population to support itself. We have also learned that fish move between the Kootenai River in Idaho and Kootenai Lake in British Columbia, and that fish also use the portion of the river upstream from Bonners Ferry. In addition, we have learned that burbot spawn in both the Mainstem Kootenai River and its tributaries in mid-February through early March. We have learned that the hatchery-raised burbot released into the river as juveniles survive relatively well, grow quickly, and attempt to spawn in the river by the age of three. As for the lifespan of a burbot in the Kootenai Basin, we have learned that burbot live until the age of eight to 10 years, and they are capable of reaching 30 to 35 inches and 8 to 14 pounds. We have estimated that there are approximately 40 to 50,000 burbot currently residing in the Kootenai River system, and over 18,000 of those are mature adult fish. Perhaps most importantly, 
We have estimated that restoration targets set for the adult population in 2005 were met in 2019. These results highlight the success of project collaborators to rebuild this population and meet restoration targets in a relatively short period of time. Furthermore, in response to these important findings, Idaho Fish and Game opened a harvest fishery for burbot in the Kootenai Basin effective January 2019. Anglers can now harvest six burbot per day with no restrictions on size. Surveys conducted by Fish and Game staff in 2019 have shown that anglers are enjoying the opportunity to fish for burbot and they are experiencing success doing so. Anglers wishing to target burbot can find them in the Kootenai River, its tributaries, and also on Bonner Lake. Traditionally, anglers were able to target burbot under the ice. This option still exists on Bonner Lake and often in tributaries. However, the Kootenai River no longer freezes due to operations from Libby Dam in Montana. As such, anglers will have to be creative to locate areas where burbot are spawning and susceptible to harvest. Many of the historical and known spawning areas are easily accessible from shoreline. Typical angling methods include jigging with a piece of cut bait, worm, shrimp, or squid, or simply bait fishing on the bottom. Burbot anglers across the nation typically experience the most success in targeting burbot during the peak spawning season, which is February and March. It is expected the same will be true in the Kootenai Basin. Project collaborators are extremely excited to provide fishing opportunity for this once prized resource in the Kootenai River.